You're watching a global celebration of all things Notre Dame, where we invite you to watch, connect, give, and vote. This is Notre Dame Day, live from the LaFortune Student Center. Welcome to Notre Dame Day. If you're just joining us for the first time, welcome to hour number seven of Notre Dame Day, a 29-hour global celebration of the University of Notre Dame. If you're a regular viewer, thank you. We promise you this hour's telecast will not disappoint. My name is Dennis Brown. I'm the Assistant Vice President in the Office of Public Affairs and Communications here at the University. For the next four hours, I'll be your co-host for our very first Notre Dame Day celebration. I'm here at the LaFortune Student Center on the Notre Dame campus, just a few yards away from the university's main building and its iconic Golden Dome. This will be our broadcast headquarters for the next 23 hours as we celebrate all things Notre Dame with students, alumni, parents, friends, and fans all around the world. And I'm delighted to be joined by my co-host for this hour, Jeffrey Gerlomas. Jeffrey, I know you're a senior here at Notre Dame. Just a few more weeks left, huh? Yes, just a few more weeks. Don't remind me, Dennis. I'd like to hold on as long as I can. But right now, I'm really excited to be here with you to celebrate Notre Dame Day. Throughout our Notre Dame Day celebration, we are showcasing aspects of Notre Dame in some special way. In this hour, we are going to focus on the Morris Inn, Notre Dame's on-campus hotel. Through a live report from our Notre Dame Day reporter, Claire Rembecki, and a series of videos showcasing the amenities and features of the hotel, you'll be able to get a good sense of the incredible transformation of the Morris Inn after its recent $30 million renovation and expansion. But first, let's set the stage for a live report from the Morris Inn. Dennis? Today, the Morris Inn, known as the living room of the university, remains the focal point for campus hospitality. The Morris Inn was built on campus in 1950. It was the first structure built as part of Notre Dame's post-war building program, made possible through a generous donation from 1906 Notre Dame alum Ernest M. Morris and his wife Ella. In 2012, Ernestine Racklin, the daughter of the original hotel benefactors, along with her family and the Carmichael Foundation, provided a gift to the university for the purpose of funding a major renovation and expansion of the Morris Inn. After a more than $30 million renovation, the Morris Inn reopened to the public last fall on Sunday, September 1st. Let's head over to the Morris Inn right now with our Notre Dame Day reporter, Claire Rembecki, reporting live from Roars. Thanks, Dennis, and welcome to the Morris, one of the great new additions to the Morris Inn. Morris has quickly become a campus favorite and a great gathering spot for students since it opened last fall. Tonight, Roars hosting a ton of students, as it typically does on Sunday night. But before we get to them, I'm actually joined by a campus favorite, Murph, who's been a bartender at the Morris Inn for the last 30 years. Murph, who's been the most famous person or your favorite person you've served over the last 30 years? Probably the most famous person would be the Kennedys. Uh, in 85, we had the Special Olympics here. And it was pretty special. Uh, we had Maria Shriver, we had Ted Kennedy, we had Caroline, we had John, uh, and Michael Jordan stopped by, and Mary Lou Retton. So that was probably the most exciting weekend we had as far as individuals coming to the bar. So that, That's absolutely fascinating. Um, well, I'm sure you have a ton of students to serve, so let you get back to that. Very nice to meet you, Murph. We actually, thank you. We actually have a treat. We have three students here. Emily, it's actually her birthday today, and Jake and Patrick back there. They're actually going to ask some questions, some trivia questions, have the chance to win $25 gift cards to your worst tonight. So, Emily, because it is your birthday, you'll get the first question. And I'll keep it easy. What year was Notre Dame founded? 1842. Woohoo! She wins! She gets a card. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we'll get your card over here. Thank you, Emily. Jake, you're next. Jake, you have a little bit tougher question. Oh, oh, it's okay. No. no. <laughs> um, name the oldest dorm building on campus, excluding old college. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, um, I think I'm going to go with Soren. <gasps> Close, but no cigar. It was actually St. Edwards Hall. I was going to guess that. I'm very sorry, Pat. But hopefully, okay. hopefully Emily will share her card with you. Yes. She oh, seems very you. nice. Yeah. And Pat, you are last. Pat, what hall does the Notre Dame band have their pre-football game concert on the steps? Oh, Bond Hall. Congratulations. All right. Well, we have two successful people. And Jake, it's okay. Do you want a redeeming question, Jake? Oh, yeah. I'll take We can do a redeeming I'll question. Take one. If, okay. Except if I lose this one, it'll be really. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's okay. 
Let's see. Oh. Give me an easy one. Okay. All right. We have a true or false. All right. Okay. <laughs> Newt Rockney is buried on campus. True or false? <laughs> <That's one of laughs> the I'm going to go with false. Correct. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we have three very successful people here. Fantastic. You guys did well. That is all from the Morrison. We'll send it back to you, Jeffrey and Dennis. Thanks, Claire, for introducing our viewers to Roars. Those of you who have had a chance to visit the Morris Inn in person since it reopened last September know that it has indeed undergone a truly magnificent transformation. You may also know that there's a great restaurant inside the Morris Inn. It's called Soren's. And this winter, the restaurant underwent a renovation and reopened in February on the occasion of the 200th anniversary of the birth of its namesake, Father Edward Soren, the founder of the University of Notre Dame. Located right at the north end of Notre Dame Avenue, the Morris Inn is truly a Notre Dame tradition and truly a great hotel. For those of you who haven't had a chance to see it in person since its renovation, we thought you might enjoy watching this video about the dedication of the new Morris Inn. The Morris Inn opened its doors on April the 21st, 1952, as a result of a gift from Ernest and Ella Morris. A single room cost $6 a night, and since then, the Morris Inn has continued to be the living room of Notre Dame. Good morning. Welcome to the It's the heart of campus. It's the place where we do so much of our entertaining. Whether it's a parent, whether it's an alumni, whether it's a distinguished guest. The inn has such a wonderful tradition of hospitality and service. It's doing anything and everything that we can to make the guest experience fantastic. It's the place where we showcase what Notre Dame is about. Driving into work, seeing the Golden Dome. Every day I come in and see that and I have a bigger picture of what I'm actually trying to accomplish. Excellence in service is basically the whole entire heart and soul of Notre Dame itself. Making sure that every single guest that walks through the doors of the Morris Inn is happy and content and that they feel that same way, if not better, when they're leaving. Making them feel secured and welcome. An experience that is so above and beyond the norm that they want to come back and that creates that lasting loyalty that the Morrison and the university is all about. That tradition began and was a result of that one million dollar gift from Ernest and Ella. And how wonderful it is that the gift of Ernestine and the family now allows us to continue that tradition for generations to come. the opportunity to be a part of something brand new that had that old tradition. It's a new feel, a new look. It's been refurbished and remodeled. It just represents class. The legacy is still there from the old Morrison, but the new Morrison just brightens people up. When they walk in and they see all the changes, they see how amazing the place is and how wonderful it is. This building will last forever. On behalf of the entire university community, we thank the Ernestine Rackton family and the Carmichael Foundation. We are also thankful for Rose, a gift from Jim and Sharon Raw family. The William and Mary Ann Smith Ballroom is an incredible new addition. Soren's dining room has been renewed by Alex and Kitchy McMurtry. The Wind family fireside terrace was underwritten by Larry and Cindy Wind. Notre Dame thanks all those who helped create the renewed Morris Inn. We're still the living room of the university. We look a little different. We are a more elegant living room now, but we're still home. We still get to be that welcome to a guest. Our challenge is to provide the level of service that they would expect at any great hotel, but then to cap it with that warm Notre Dame welcome and the smile that makes them feel, I'm home again.
The Morris Inn truly is spectacular, and in fact, the hotel recently received the prestigious AAA Four Diamond Award for the very first time. To qualify as a AAA Four Diamond Hotel, each hotel must undergo an intensive evaluation process that assesses the hotel cleanliness and condition, management and staff, exterior grounds, public areas, restrooms, corridors, ambiance and amenities, bathrooms and guest services. AAA defines Four Diamond Hotels as upscale in all areas and progressively more refined and stylish with physical attributes that reflect enhanced quality throughout. The fundamental hallmarks at this level include an extensive array of amenities combined with a high degree of hospitality, service, and attention to detail. Our next video will take you inside the Morris Inn and give you a little bit of a glimpse into why it deserves that four diamond distinction. Let's take a look. I'm telling you, if you haven't been back to campus in a while, you need to stop in and see the new Morris Inn. Notre Dame Day got underway nearly eight hours ago, so we thought now would be a good time to revisit some of the highlights of our broadcast so far. Let's go back to the beginning and start with a message from Father John Jenkins, the president of the university, explaining why April 27th was chosen as the date for this special celebration. Let's listen to Father Jenkins now. On April 27, 1879, Father Soren returned to Notre Dame. He had returned many times to great fanfare, but this return was not so joyful. A devastating fire had destroyed the main building and several other structures, so Father Soren returned to see the university in shambles. He gathered the dejected community in the Church of Sacred Heart. In the words of an eyewitness, he was a picture of confidence, dedication, and resolution. Even if we're all gone, he said, I would not give up. I came to build a great university, but I was punished because my dreams were too small. 
we will rebuild Notre Dame and we will build it bigger and better. By the fall, when students were scheduled to return, the main building we know now, with its golden dome and the statue of Our Lady on high, stood to welcome those students back. Father Soren never heard the words of the fight song. What though the odds be great or small, old Notre Dame will win over all. But he and his companions reflected that spirit. Regardless of the adversities, they were dedicated to advancing the great mission of Notre Dame. Today, we celebrate that spirit with the Notre Dame family around the world. Welcome to Notre Dame Day. There is not a writer in Hollywood, Dennis, who could come up with something better than the story of Notre Dame. Now, throughout our celebration of Notre Dame Day, we have been showcasing live entertainment by Notre Dame students and alumni. One of those alum, a proud member of the class of 2010, performed for us twice last night on our Notre Dame Day performance stage right here in the LaFortune Student Center. Singer-songwriter Pat McKillen earned a degree in finance from Notre Dame, but chose to pursue a career in music. He's well worth another listen, so let's watch this replay of one of Pat's performances last night. strong beneath a blazing midwest sky shaking down the thunder from the heavens high waking up the echoes from every corner they will come we are gold and we are gold and we are rallying our sons out tonight in the night and their winds outside Stand by her side While her loyal sons are marching Onward to victory Across the distance, our lady She looks down in all the glory And the statues of our past Leaning on to tell their stories Of peering over walls And casting shadows on the lawn They are golden, they are golden And they'll sing it on and on oh, Tonight is our night And now is our time We'll stand by her side While Sons are marching onward to victory. Onwards to victory While her loyal sons are marching Onwards to victory Oh, lady thousand strong Beneath a blazing Midwest sky Shaking down the thunder from the heavens high
Before we wrap up our live telecast this hour, we're going to check in with Jeffrey Gerlomas at the Notre Dame Social Media Command Center. Jeffrey. Thank you, Dennis. I'm back here with Jonathan Ritartha and Stephen Hill, and we're going to take another look not only at these fabulous hats, but also at some of our social media statistics from tonight. And, and well, more interesting things than statistics. Why don't you walk us through it, Jonathan? Thank you, Jeff. I'm John, this is Steve. Steve, why don't you tell everybody why we're wearing these hats? Uh, we're wearing these hats uh, in support of us getting 1,000 uh, donors to the thing. We're waiting for 1,000. Need to get to 1,000 gifts, folks, and we're gonna keep these stupid hats on until we get there. Let's take a look at what's happening now. First of all, Big thank you to everybody that's tuning in right now from around the globe. Huge thank you to everybody that's participated on NotreDameDay.nd.edu. We can show you here on tab number two. The big green button, it's here. NotreDameDay.nd.edu, hit the green button. Make your gift and be presented with your three voting options. Uh, again, couldn't be any easier. We appreciate everybody who's participated so far. What's happening on social media at this hour? Well, we're getting a lot of chatter, NETV, Representing in a big way this hour with Jeff and Claire live from Roar, so it's good to see them. And Farley Hall has laid down the gauntlet already for their challenge tomorrow. I believe it's in the 10 o'clock hour against BP. Beating BP tomorrow at 10 a.m. is the most important thing you will ever do as a Farley girl. So be there. I don't think I could put it any better myself. I mean, it's gonna it, it's gonna be intense, judging from the kind of uh, competitions that we saw earlier this evening. So starting to heat up. Uh, you know, we're we're doing well here. We're uh, we're having quarter dogs for sure all night long. Let's take a look at the leaderboard right now. I'll swivel my chair. Now, pointing this out here, big change recently. Colorado Springs is coming forth in a big way amongst our alumni clubs. They have 1.55 percent of the vote. Originally, it was San Jose, Silicon Valley, and Boston was in the mix for a while. Colorado Springs dominating. Thanks to all you guys out there in Colorado Springs. Uh, it's still up for grabs, you know? It's still up for grabs amongst all the clubs. Finally, our total right now, let's get a refresh here. 933 griffs, over half a million dollars. Thanks so much to all of you. We're just getting started here on uh, Notre Dame Day. Uh, and like I said, the hats, they're staying on. We're going to get Jeff in a hat soon, too, until we get to 1,000 votes. Right, Jeff? What's next, Howard? <laughs> well, if we, hey, we can keep up that pace. We've raised $505,000 so far. Who's, who knows what we can do in the remaining almost 23 hours of Notre Dame Day? Coming up at the 2 o'clock hour, we have a live visit to Stinson Remick Hall, Notre Dame's state-of-the-art engineering building, and another visit from Erin Hoffman Harding, a Notre Dame alumna from the class of 1997. She sang, like I do, in the Notre Dame Liturgical Choir, so she's one of the good ones. She's the Vice President for Student Affairs. She's going to talk to us about a very important and major aspect of life here at Notre Dame. We'll talk with Joe Rogers, who graduated from Notre Dame in 2010, was a great hockey goalie for the Fighting Irish, and finally, we'll profile the College of Engineering. All that's coming right up, so don't forget to give and vote, and stay tuned if you're into the overnight kind of thing, right here at Notre Dame Day. Let's go Irish. <laughs> 